With the historic funeral of Queen Elizabeth II quickly approaching, it's worth reviewing the strict rules that govern these somber occasions. Just about everything that takes place within the British monarchy is tightly controlled and done according to strict protocols. Even things that take place behind the scenes are done according to rules, traditions, and procedures that have been in place for centuries. This is particularly true when it comes to public-facing events like funerals. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As with all things related to the British monarchy, what something is called is a matter of grave importance. And in the case of funerals, there's an admittedly thin line between state funerals and ceremonial funerals. From shore to shore in Great Britain, there will be a moment of silence. State funerals are usually reserved for monarchs only. As such, the last state funeral for the crown to take place in the United Kingdom was in 1952, when King George VI, father of the late Queen Elizabeth, was laid to rest. Lower-ranking members of the royal family are given what is known as ceremonial funerals. Princess Diana was given such a funeral in 1997, as was Queen Elizabeth's mother in 2002. Ceremonial funerals are sometimes awarded to non-royals, such as former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's in 2013. As a practical matter, however, the differences are subtle. Indeed, the main difference involves how the carriage carrying the coffin is transported. In a state funeral, it's pulled by sailors, while in a ceremonial one, it's pulled by horses. The British have been wearing black at funerals for over a century, and indeed, to this day, for a British royal or even a commoner to wear any other color in public would be frowned upon. However, when her own father died in 1952, then Princess Elizabeth was effectively caught off guard as she was in Africa at the time. Unfortunately, the monarch succumbed to illness, forcing his daughter, next in line to the throne, to return home without black mourning clothes of her own. The now queen and her team returned to England, and she sat on the plane while waiting for a servant to show up with proper black attire, then changed clothes on the aircraft, lest she be publicly seen not wearing black. These days, all members of the royal family are expected to keep a black outfit on hand at all times when traveling, lest there be a repeat of what happened in 1952. During the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, much attention was paid to the hats that adorned the heads of the fashionable ladies who attended the affair. Though the days of wearing hats in public in day-to-day -day life are largely gone, on both sides of the Atlantic, when it comes to British royal weddings and funerals, hats or fascinators are a must. Further, according to Newsweek, Queen Elizabeth herself instituted some rules when it comes to attire at public-facing royal events. For example, women will be expected to wear dresses, black of course, or skirts, with the hem falling just below the knee, as Her Majesty preferred. Further, says royal expert Victoria Arbiter, there are to be no bare legs among women in the royal family, and they instead must wear tights. Arbiter told the outlet back in 2021, it is the only hard, steadfast rule in terms of what the queen requires. When a member of the royal family dies, a period of mourning is invoked. In the case of the deceased being a lower-ranking member of the family, like Prince Philip, the period lasts eight days. If it's the monarch, the period lasts 10 days. During this time, all royal activities are off, and in the unlikely event that someone in the family will be forced to make a public appearance and or appear on camera, expect them to be dressed in black. Across the realm, flags will also be at half-staff throughout the period of mourning.